This is the year. This is the year. This is the year of manifest favor in my life. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year. And I walk into the blessing of God's manifest favor in my life. So I'll leave an expectation and I walk into the blessing of God's manifest favor in my life. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year of manifested favor in my life. This is the year. This is the year. Oh, this is the year. In my life, so I'll live in expectation and I'll walk into the blessings of God's manifested favor. Oh, oh in my life, so I'll live in expectation and I'll Of God's manifest favor, oh, in my life. This is a year. This is a year. This is a year of manifest favor in my life. This is a year. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. 
so good to see you all on whether you are on facebook or on youtube speak to me thank you for worshiping with me yeah that intro song i'm gonna tell you a little bit more about it in a minute if you're on facebook or youtube speak to me speak to me holla at your boy all right who's on daphne i got a little bit more time than i had in the morning so i can talk to some of y'all daphne uh joanne kayla Chantel, pastor Roz, good to see you susan God bless you. Thank you so much. Listen, if you are on Facebook, please share this. If you are on YouTube, you can also share this. But I'm excited to see all of you all for this night. Uh, that song, as you can see by the scrolling ticker, is a song called This Is The Year. This Is The Year by my sister. Belanda Smith, an amazing leader and artist. She wrote that song years and years and years and years and years ago. And um, what's so interesting, and I was talking to her about this earlier in the week, what's so interesting is that that song, I believe, was a prophetic revelation. And when God ministers in a song like that, I believe that God, knowing all that's getting ready to happen, knowing the time, knows that that song would be just as powerful today as it was when we first heard it roughly 11, 12 years ago. So I'm glad that that was an encouragement for you. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for tagging someone. This is your next move now. I am Pastor Sean Marshall. I am a pastor husband, a father, um, coach, consultant, and I wrote a book, this book, Your Next Move Now, uh, How to Get Unstuck, Embrace Change, and Make Your Next Move Now, Transition Decisions. And the reason why I wrote that book is because I really believe that change and transition are not the same. We use those words interchangeably, but they're not the same, okay? Change is what happens. And if you keep on living, change is going to happen. Whether you do anything or not, change is going to happen. But transition is how we respond when change happens. And I believe that many people get stuck because they don't know how to respond to change. They just don't know what to do. And so God has given me over the past maybe decade, tons of wisdom, tons of revelation from my own life and my own story that I wanted to be able to share um, because I believe that that's why God had me go through some of the things that I went through. If God puts you, allows you to go through some mess, you need to know that God is allowing that mess to give you a message. Okay. And so I wanted to minister a message out of my mess. And even as I started this year, and we started seven days ago, talking about what we need for a new year. Many of us have gone through um, some terrible, really challenging and difficult years uh, these past four to five years, right? With COVID and some of us were struggling before COVID even started with life and just different situations. And uh, I shared at the beginning of this year that I don't believe you need a re another revolution, another resolution. I believe you need a revelation. Many of you have made resolutions only to see those resolutions not come to pass. And you've been frustrated, right? And so I believe that what God wants to do in your life is to give you a revelation, a revelation of what he is doing, right? So that's where we started a week ago, Saturday. And for the last seven days. I've been getting on at seven in the morning to give you encouragement and insight out of that place, right? Out of this place of, Lord, let me not do this year like I've done it in the past. Let me not do this year like I did it last year. I don't need a, another catchy Christian phrase. I need a revelation of where you're working in my life so that 
I can know what to do so that I can know how to respond when change happens so that I can know what it is that you want from my life this year in 2024. And so we started Monday talking about how to get a revelation. What does that even mean? Uh, how does that look when God is speaking? How do I understand it? What are the modes? What is the biblically established pattern for God speaking to his people? When we understand that God has a pattern of speaking, we realize that the issue is not whether or not God is speaking to you. The issue is, am I postured to hear the Lord speaking? Right. So we talked about those different modes. Then we went from there to, to realizing that God wants to give you a revelation of you. Right. God wants to help you get to know you. God wants to help you get to know you. There's some things about you that you don't know yet. And I believe that it's possible that you haven't fully even been you yet. And so when we catch that, we can understand and realize that there's something else I need to learn about me. Then we move from there in, and talking about uh, what that was and God wanted to reveal us back to us uh, to talking about God wanting to give us a revelation of new opportunities. And we talked about God giving us a revelation of divine strategies. And we talked about all of these things, right, in an effort to get us to understand how do I receive from God everything I need to receive from God in order to maximize this year. Tonight, I want to announce a couple of things. First of all, I want to announce that because, I told you this earlier in the week, because I have accepted my call, answered my call this year, the thing that God's revealed to me this year is that I need to be faithful to helping people make their next move now. I need to position myself so that God can help position you to respond to what he's doing. So I want to serve the movement of God in your life. And so in order to do that, I'm going to do two things, and I'll come back and say more about them at the end. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be on every Sunday at 7 p.m. Every Sunday at 7 p.m. until the Lord says me, tells me to stop. I'm going to be on every Sunday at 7 p.m giving you encouragement, giving you strategies, giving you ideas. Some weeks we will have guests. And I'm just going to provide you with some strategies, some ideas, prayerfully some revelation from the Lord about how you can respond to what God wants to do in your life so that you can move forward. This doesn't need to be another year where you don't do all that God has given you to do. It needs to be this year. Okay, type that. This is, this is the year. This is the year. I'm not making false promises. I'm not going to keep saying, well, you know, when the Lord releases me. We talked about that too. Some of us are waiting on God but God is waiting on us, right? So this is not going to be the year that I spiritualize more in action, where I'm not going to be prophetically procrastinating. <laughs> this is the year where I'm going to take action. And so because this is going to be that kind of year where we take action, I want to position myself to minister to you so that you can do all that God has given you to do this year. So that I'm, that's my commitment that I am making to you. Thank you so much for joining and for tagging and for sharing. That's, that's my commitment to you, okay? I'm gonna do that. 
I'm going to position myself every Sunday night to be here for you. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is two weeks from now, on Saturday, January the 27th, Saturday, January the 27th, okay? I am going to be hosting a virtual summit, a virtual workshop, if you will. And the purpose of this workshop is going to be to give you some strategies, some strategies, okay? Teaching is great. Teaching can open our minds. Teaching, revelation, insight, it's great. But you all understand what I'm about to say. You've been in church. You've been at conferences. You've been at events. And you've heard great messages. You've heard tremendous sermons. And you've gotten prophetic words. And you know that you took notes. And you got binders full of stuff. And you ain't done nothing with none of that great word. You got, you got, oh, then he said this. And then Apostle Bishop said that. And there has been no action or progress. The purpose of this virtual workshop is to help you to take action. To help you to take action. To do something. To make a plan. To leave with strategies. Okay, you got a word. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. But you need a strategy. Remember what we said last week. When God gives a revelation, our job of how he's working in our lives, our job is to respond to what the Lord is revealing. That's our job. God gives a revelation of where he wants to work. But what made the wise men wise in Matthew 2 is that they knew how to respond. So when we come together on this Saturday, every person who registers, you're going to be able to download a virtual workbook. It's going to be based upon the content I've been sharing these past seven days. You're going to get some tools. I'm going to spend two hours with you, giving you some tools so that you can walk away from that workshop with a plan of how you are going to do what God has given you to do. Now, I know some of you all are saying, see, I knew it was something. Now he's going to sell us these tickets to this workshop. Ask me how much the, the registration is for the workshop. It's free 99. Okay. This is what the Lord has given me to do. All right. So I need you to register for that workshop. Register. Okay. You're going to go to my website and you're going to register at seanmarshall.net. There'll be a big link right there in red, right there at the page. You're going to register, okay? The link is in the chat, all right? The link to my website, seanmarshall.net. I want you to go there. I want you to register. I want you to plan to be there. You're going to get a resource. You're going to get a workbook. We're going to spend some time in prayer. We're going to get some strategies, okay? So that this can be the year, not next year, not five years, not 10 years. This will be the year. All right. This will be the year. If you can't make it, I see a question about replay. You can't make it. If you register, you will get access to the replay, right? I'll give you access to the replay and I'll still give you access to the materials, but you need to register. Okay, register, register, register. All right, I'll give you access, but you need to register. So register at seanmarshall.net. Some of y'all are asking how much you can't believe what I just said. I said it is free. I heard the man from the movie, give us us free. It's free. 
receive it, okay? All I need you to do, is I need you to be there and I need you to share that with someone else that you know needs to get it together this year. Can you do me that favor? Thank you, Kalisha. Thank you, Dana. I see people saying I'm registered. I'm registered. If you typed it, it, it's, it was quick, wasn't it? If you want to register, if you register, type in and tell me that you're registered. Tell me that you're registered. All right. I'm going to share the final message uh, with you tonight. I'm going to share a word with you tonight. And then I'm going to get on out of your way. Okay. Uh, because I do want to conclude this series. But I want to get out of your way. And I also want to get out of the way. Because I know that my brother, Pastor C. Terrell Wheat, is going to be on with Sunday night prayer at eight, okay? So uh, let's make sure that we register, seanmarshall.net. I wanna see you in that virtual space, all right? So we are going to look at Acts 20, Acts chapter 20, And verse 17. Thank you so much for registering. Thank you, Sister Glennis. Thank you, Daphne. Thank you, Tracy. Roz. Annette. Excited. I'm glad you're going to be there with me. Spread the word. Once you register, open your scriptures. I'm going to take a few minutes and walk through Acts chapter 20. Verses 17 through 24. Acts 20, verses 17 through 24. We are talking about how to make your next move now. I see you, Ziva. I see you, Estella. I see you, Carolyn, Susan. Thank you. Excited. Make sure you pass that on. Acts chapter 20, verses 17 through 24. All right? And it reads, in the old church we say, and it reads thusly. And when they came to him, he said to them, you know, from the first day that I came to Asia, this is the Apostle Paul, in that manner, I always lived among you, serving the Lord with humility, with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. See, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God, okay? This is day seven. We are talking about how to make your next move now. This is the conclusion of our conversation. This is the conclusion. Are you excited to go? We'll be done. And I'll be back here next Sunday to say something else. So I don't care where I am by eight, I'm just be done. All right. How to make your next move now. You all in uh, 2020, um, the Lord blessed my family. We were able to buy a home in the middle of the pandemic. Y'all, we bought a home. We closed on it. We were getting ready um, to, to leave a rental. We were so excited. It was pretty much, you know, me coming from my background, having experienced homelessness. It was more than I could have ever dreamed. God has been good to us. And we were excited because we've been looking for years. And then my daughter is old enough to talk by that time. And she says, Daddy, I want a house with a yard and, and, and she's only gotten more specific about what she wants. And so uh, we get this house and we were excited, but then we realized that having the house now meant that we had to move. And y'all had to move before. 
Moving is not nice. It takes a lot out of you. It requires a great deal of planning and execution. It's stuff you got to throw away, stuff you got to pack away, stuff you got to do to make sure that the next destination you get into is all prepared for you. And then when you get there, the things you got to make sure you have when you go in, you got to move your clothes out the closet and you got to go into the cedar closet and pull all them clothes out, clothes you forgot you bought. And then you got to go uh, to the next location and make sure all the utilities are turned on at the right time. Because if the water's not turned on, then you ain't going to be able to take a shower and you're going to be funky for a few days, right? And then you do that and you got to pack up your house. And as you're packing up your house, you're moving your furniture, you're finding stuff that you thought you lost. You're finding food under the, the thing, the, the chair that your children have left, uh, eating in the living room. You told them not to eat in the living room. It, it pulls up a bunch of stuff you did not think you would be dealing with, stuff you thought you cleaned up, stuff you thought you taken care of. And that's all the stuff that goes along with moving. So y'all, I've rarely, I've rarely not been excited about the destinations. That, that hasn't been the problem. I have been demotivated by the process of moving from one place to the next. That's where we meet the difficulty. It's never in getting to the place. It's often in getting from the current place to the place. It's not about working ourselves up to be motivated about the new thing that we're going to occupy. It's about navigating the in-between, the meantime. One of my mentors, Dr. D. Dale Griffin, he calls it the mean time because it's a mean time. And so it's difficult to navigate that space of the in-between. It's daunting and it can be paralyzing. And so there were a few days where my wife and I were like, okay, we need to really get it together. And so I said, okay, well, we, we purchased this house and, and I'm sure that the landlord and our old place he wants to get the stuff cleaned up and, and surely he's going to, you know, make sure that we need to be out. So when we get a deadline date, that's when we'll get really serious. And I talked to the landlord. He's like, oh, no, take your time. I'm going to put it on the market. I mean, this did not help me. I needed a deadline. I needed a date where I needed to be out and I needed a date where I needed to go in. So the landlord at the new place wasn't going to give me a date when I had to move in because I'm the landlord. <laughs> so have you ever been stuck? trying to move from where you were to where you need to be, and the timelines are uncertain. Have you ever been in the process of trying to go where you know God is saying for you to go, but you're struggling because you realize that you've grown comfortable where you are, and you realize that there's a lot of stuff that you got to deal with in going from where you are to where God is calling you. And you realize there's some stuff that you thought you dealt with, some stuff that you thought you cleaned up, some stuff that you thought that you had moved up and packed away. And now you have to revisit some unfinished business so that you can move into the new business. All right? I want to give you some hope today. After these seven days, I want to give you some hope because many of us are struggling to even believe we can really make it to that place that God has shown to us because we kind of feel like, man, God must be real tired of me by now. <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. Have you ever sat back and said, God must be really tired of me. God, God, you've been speaking to me about this since what? How old is Pastor Marshall? What year was he born? Since that year. You've been talking to me about this for 30 years, for 20 years. God must be real tired of me talking about, well, God, I'm ready. I'm ready. Right? And so it's demotivating because we know that we should have moved by now. We haven't moved. I need you to understand that God loves you. I know it sounds like a basic thing to say, but the Lord loves you. And I really believe that God 
is at work in your life, that God is making a way in your wilderness, that God, God, I'm not talking about you, I'm telling you that God is working out provision for you. You may feel like you've made too many financial mistakes, but God knew the financial mistakes you would make before he called you. You might feel so much shame and guilt and regret. God knew all of the things that you would be feeling shame and guilt and grief and regret over before he started speaking to you. So everything you think in your life that has created a roadblock for you to experience what God wants to do in your life, I need you to know that God saw the roadblocks before you ever even saw them or created them. And so God is at work in your life. He's at work in your relationships. He's at work in that marriage. He's at work in your money. He's at work in your vocation. He's at work in your health. God is at work and he is about to reveal to you what you need to see so that you can respond and meet him where he is at work. What I loved about it is when we chose the date that we wanted to move, you know what we did? We called some movers. Why? Because we didn't have to do it by ourselves. God is ready to move you. God is ready to shift you. God is ready to release you. God is ready to do the stuff that you cannot do. But you need to respond so that you can be ready and willing and surrender to the work of the Spirit. And there are some things that I believe that we can do in order to get ourselves ready for what God is going to do. The first thing I think we need to do is we need to reconcile the past. We need to reconcile the past. So in this text that I read to you, the Apostle Paul is traveling to Rome and he's traveling there against the better judgment of the early Christians. Remember, I talked about this the other day, Paul got a prophetic word saying that if you go back to Jerusalem, there's going to be chains and there's going to be, you know, arrests and imprisonment and persecution there. He got that prophetic word in the previous chapter. And so Paul, for Paul, this prophetic word was an affirmation and a revelation, an affirmation of the revelation that the Lord had already given him because the Lord had already revealed to him that he was going to, to go in this way. And so the prophetic word came to him to affirm it. Isn't that interesting? Many of us, we, we want the prophetic words, oh, you get in a car next week, it's going to be red. And Paul's like, thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving me this word that I'm moving in the right direction. And, and even though I'm moving in the right direction, there's going to be some chains. Can I tell you something? Just because it seems hard doesn't mean it isn't God. We, we live in this candy-coated Christian culture where the only tolerance that we have when it comes to the prophetic are the words that get us excited. And, and sometimes I think we need to just shift our palate a little bit to hear those prophetic words that, that may not be so wonderful to hear, but still are an affirmation of how God is at work in our lives. So he gets this word and he decides that as he passes near Ephesus on his way to do what God has called him to do, that he's going to spend some time with the elders and the leaders in that 
church region, right? For an emotional farewell. Paul spent some time here. He was an apostolic pastor in this region of Ephesus. So he spends some time, he goes to them. And in this passage of scripture, what's happening is he's reminiscing with them about the motives of his ministry. He says, I was never focused on making a name for myself or achieving celebrity status, right? He reminisces about his motives. Then he reminisces about the manner of his ministry, how he lived a simple, humble, consistent life before them. Yes, as an apostle and an evangelist, but also as a loving and faithful shepherd. So then he reminisces not just about his motives or the manner of his ministry, but the message of his ministry. He said, I preached Jesus and I preached repentance and helping people to have faith in the Lord. What is Paul doing? Paul is reflecting and reconciling the past. When you reflect meaningfully on the past, you can reconcile the past, okay? You have the capacity to name your losses. Many of us are stuck because we've got some things that we've lost that we've not been able to reconcile, okay? I see you, Frank. When we reflect meaningfully on the past, we can reconcile the past. So you can name your losses. You can acknowledge some of the things that hurt. Now watch this. Why is it important to name your losses when you reconcile the past? Because when you name your losses, you can name your lessons. Okay. God does not waste pain. We talked about that, that God is revealing the purpose of your pain. You won't be able to catch the revelation in, the perp in, in your pain. You won't be able to find the purpose in your pain if you're pretending like what you went through wasn't painful. God wants to give you precious jewels out of your pain. But what you got to be able to do is you got to look at the thing and you've got to acknowledge, yeah, that hurt, but this is what God did. That's you reconciling the past. You can go back over your life and look at the themes of your life. Recognize what, how have the themes shown me how God has been present and working in my life, right? That's what David was able to do in 1 Samuel 17. He couldn't fight the giant until he had reconciled his past. When he reconciled his past, Saul says, hey, boy, why do you think you can fight this giant? David says, one time I was tending my sheep and, uh, you know, this lion came and took one of my sheep. And I was like, bro, where you think you're going with my sheep? Pow, get my sheep back, man. I ain't got time for this. And then he says, another time a bear came. Bear's bigger than a lion. So bear comes and he tries to take one of my sheep. I was like, where you think you going with my sheep, bro? So I fought the bear and got my sheep back. As he's reconciling the past, it occurs to him that one of the themes that God has given him about how the Lord has worked in his life is that he has the grace to fight with things that are bigger than him. <laughs> See, you don't know that if you're still not dealing with your encounter with the lion, if you're still not dealing with your encounter with the bear, then you won't understand what the Lord showed you when you had the run in with the bear. But because David had reconciled his past, he knew that if God did that then, and if God could do this there, then God can do that now. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah, I probably, the bear got a good scratch in, but guess what? I won because the Lord was with me. And if the Lord was with me with that lion, and if the Lord was with me with that bear, then the Lord will be with me with this uncircumcised Philistine. Guess what? The Lord was with him that day. So I learned something from my pain when I can reconcile it, when I can accept that, yes, I went through it, but God was with me and he showed me something when I went through it. All right? That's the first thing you got to do. You got to be able to reconcile. 
And then when you reconcile the past, you have to receive the prompting. Bless you, Duana. You have to receive the prompting. Receive the prompting. Paul says that now he goes bound by the spirit. Bound by the spirit. That phrase in the Greek is deo honuma. Deo honuma. It literally means to be captured by the wind, to, to be arrested by the wind of the spirit. Paul says, look, I, I'm being prompted. This isn't something that I came up with. This, this, this isn't my five-year plan. This, this, this isn't something I, I tried to do. And, and by the way, we often miss God's promptings because we're too distracted by our planning. Paul was sensitive enough in the spirit to recognize that the things that were happening and the things that were being spoken to him, the things that were being revealed to him were not just his imagination, not just some options in front of him. He was able to recognize, no, this is the spirit at work. And now he says, not only am I hearing the spirit, I'm bound by the spirit. Now, some of y'all I know might be too Baptist for this, but here's a question. When was the last time that you felt bound by the spirit? Okay, I serve at the Salem Baptist Church of Chicago. Dr. Charlie Dates is my pastor. And every now and then Dr. Dates will call me within Salem, the resident Pentecostal. It's a term I wear gladly, probably. Now listen to me. I am unashamedly that. I think I'm more Bapticostal than Pentecostal, right? But I want you to hear something. <clears throat> I love to shout. Almost shouted today. I love to let the spirit move. I love when we're laying hands. I, if you listen, on a good Pentecostal Sunday, you might catch me in a corner dancing, speaking in tongues, waiting on an interpretation. But many times when we talk about the Holy Ghost in church, we're simply talking about those people who caught the Holy Ghost. You've heard that. Oh, she caught the Holy Ghost today. No, you don't catch the Holy Ghost, but every now and then the Holy Ghost should catch us. Okay. When was the last time that the Holy Ghost was able to catch you? When was the last time that the Spirit of God arrested you and compelled you, compelled by the Spirit? When was the last time that you felt prompted to Spirit-led action? We talked about this on Monday. God speaks in dreams. He speaks by His Spirit to you in prayer. He speaks through His written word, right? All of those ways are ways in which God can prompt you to spirit-led action. And it can sometimes be spirit-led action that may not make any sense. I pastored a wonderful church. As a matter of fact, I was talking to some friends earlier and it was 10 years ago today that I accepted this call to pastor this church. I pastored a wonderful church. And uh, I remember coming to that church, my wife and I, and uh, my daughter was born while I was pastoring this church. And the Lord was blessing tremendously. This is a place I could have just, I could have finished out my ministry there. And one day, someone offered me um, another job. And uh, they, they, they grabbed their, their belly, real, real prophetic Pentecostal-like. And they said, mm, I'm sensing that the Lord is calling you to this role in our denomination. I said, Mm, go go have a bowel movement because that that's not God. <laughs> I said I am happy where I am. Leave me alone. I'm straight. I told my wife. My wife said, mm. "I said, what is that? What does that mean?" She says, "Every time that's happened, you 
are convinced you know what's going on, but I think you need to pray about this. So I was praying about it one Sunday morning in my office before church. And the Lord said to me, I said, I said to the Lord, I said to the Lord, Lord, this was my prayer. I said, God, this doesn't make any sense. But if this is what you want me to do, if you want me to release this call and embrace this other call, I said, Lord, speak to me and I will obey you. Speak clearly to me and I will obey you. Five minutes later, one of my little church kids knocked on my door and she had a piece of paper in her hand and she said, Pastor, this is for you. I sat down, I opened up the paper and at the top of the paper, she wrote, God wants you to obey him. I knew in that moment that I was experiencing the Deo Honuma of God and that God was speaking to me loud and clear. This may not make sense to you, but I need you to trust this prompting. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. But can I tell you that there have been so many transformations I've experienced since walking away from that call, people that I loved, a role that I loved, that I had no clue about, so many connections that I made, so many things that I've learned. And God had a trajectory of experiences and things that he wanted me to do that I could not see. Never allow your place to comfort you out of the calling that comes by the prompting. Sometimes we can be in a place that is so wonderful, so beautiful, so comfortable, so advantageous, so marvelously compensating that the comfort of our present place causes us to ignore the call that comes to us in the prompting of the Lord. The Apostle Paul received the prompting. And then when you reconcile the past and you receive the prompting, then you can rest in the process. You can rest in the process because there will be a process. Paul said, you know, I'm not exactly sure how any of this might turn out. Um, all I know is that there are chains waiting for me. He said, I don't know everything. <clears throat> I have a few knowns, but some of those knowns are not fun knowns. <laughs> um, but I trust the Lord. And so because I trust the Lord, watch this. I'm going to do what I know to do. And I'm going to leave what I don't know up to the Lord. I don't know how this is going to pan out, but I do know what he said. So I'll take this step and I'll just trust. Hallelujah. I feel your presence, Lord. I'll just trust that if I take this step, that God has the next step planned. And, and some of us struggle to make a move because we don't have clarity on what's on the other side of the move. I wanna tell you that if you develop the discipline to simply rest in what you don't know, rest in what you do know, Rest in the fact that you may not know how you're going to pay for it, but rest in knowing that he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Rest in knowing you may not know how you're going to make money, but rest in knowing that you do know that you've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You may not know if it will be dangerous or not, but you can rest in knowing that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We rarely 
can see the power of the promises of God until we embrace the process of God. How do you know, how do you get to experience no weapon forming against you shall prosper when you're scared to go where weapons are? I remember one time I was pastoring and I'm almost done. And um, there was a young man that died and was killed in our neighborhood. And the Lord told me, take the church to where he was killed and pray. And um, I talked to the chief of police that called me. And the chief of police of the village said, Pastor, I don't think you want to go there. I think it's a it's a dangerous spot and there's some stuff going on there. And I, I asked him a question. I said, sir, are you telling me not to go there or are you asking me not to go there? He said, well, I can't tell you not to go there. I'm, I said, OK, do me a favor. If you're not telling me, because if you told me, I, I respect authority. You're the chief of police. I would do that. I said, but if you're not telling me not to go, if you're asking me not to go then I'm sorry, I I can't take your request over this command. So this is what I want you to do. Give me a squad car to accompany my church as we go. We went, we prayed, nothing happened to us, but the people who killed the boy were caught in 24 hours. I don't know everything, but what I do know is that when I act on what God has told me and I rest in that God knows everything that I don't know, that that's when I see God doing what he said he would do. So you all, there is a process. The process will require you to do some things, to embrace some things, to accept some things. But God is in the process. And if God is in the process, I can rest in it. So 2023. Hey, Mary Hendrickson. Mary is the woman who took my new job when I left it. There's a fun story that I'll tell y'all at some point about how Mary heard the promptings and accepted God's call. Helped me to shift. And she shifted into what God had for her. But if you rest in the process of God, you'll see the promises of God unfold in ways you could never have imagined. So this is what I want to do. I want to pray. Let y'all go. But we're starting a journey. 2024. This is the year. And we're going to start it off with reconciling the past, receiving the prompting and resting in God's process. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this past week. Thank you for how you're speaking to us. Thank you for how you even speak to us tonight. God, I pray for your people. Come on, let's pray. God, I thank you for giving us the grace to reconcile the past. God, help walk us back through our own story. God, I pray even as we walk back through our own story that you would give us a director's cut, that you would give us a director's commentary on the painful losses and the painful transitions of our life so that we can learn the lessons that come out of our losses, so that we can reflect meaningfully on what you've taught us about you and what you've taught us about us. Father, I thank you for giving us the prompting. Help us to receive the prompting of the Lord, whether you speak it to us in dreams, whether you speak it to us through the message that we hear from the word of God, whether you speak it to us uh, in prophetic utterances and confirm and affirm, God, we are ready. Our hearts are open to receive your prompting. We want to hear your spirit giving us direction. Give us direction. Give us clarity. Give us the next step, God. We're ready. We are ready. Come on. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready, God, to receive your prompting. We're ready to receive your prompting. We value your prompting more than we value our planning. It may not make sense. You may call us to pick up and move somewhere. You may call us to do something differently. You may, but God, we are ready. You may call us to a role we think we're not qualified for. But God, if you prompt us, we will follow. And God, give us the grace to rest in the process. 
God, give us what we need to know and give us peace about what we don't know. God, as you give us instructions, as you reveal to us how you're calling us to respond, as you give us concrete actions, thank you, God, that if we do what you give us to do, we'll watch you do what we could never do. And I thank you, God, that this year will be a transformational year for your people. This will be a transformational year where they experience all that you have ordained, that they will see where you're working and meet you in every place, that they will behold the power and the might of a God who loves us and loves the people that you've created us to serve and to bless. So God, may it be so for your glory as we make our next move now in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 and amen. Woo, glory to God. Thank you so much. Listen, I'm about to get off here, but I want you to do two things for me. Number one, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to my YouTube channel, okay? We'll be back, like I said, every Sunday at 7 p.m. till the Lord tells me different. Every Sunday, you're gonna come here, find some kind of encouragement, some kind of instruction some kind of equipping, okay? Every Sunday, 7 p.m., don't miss it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, all right? Tell your friends, tell your loved ones. The other thing I want you to do is if you haven't already done it, I want you to go and register for the virtual workshop. It is free 99, okay? Register for the virtual summit. I want you to meet me there. Pastor Hannah would say, don't just meet me there. Beat me there. <laughs> okay. The virtual summit, Saturday, January 27th from 10 to noon. Okay. 10 to noon. 10 to noon. When we start that day, I'm going to start the day with some work. I'm going to do some work. I'm going to do some praying. And in 2024, we're going to do some moving forward. God bless you all. Have an amazing night. Thank you for being on with me. Listen, tune in. My brother's getting ready to come on. He's getting ready to give us Sunday night prayer. Pastor C. Terrell Wheat. I'm going to share it to my page. You don't want to miss that either. God bless you. Look forward to meeting y'all here every Sunday at 7 p.m. and seeing you at the virtual summit. Bye-bye.